extinct countries. I've done a lot of videos where I talk about countries that no longer exist. I've maybe even mentioned a few that I will hear, but I've never done it regarding one specific region slash current country, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Understanding which countries used to exist in the area where the United States now are, why they were created, and why they were eventually destroyed. If the video does well, I can do this for other countries as well. There were at least 12 to 13 countries that used to exist in the current territory of the United States. Some were incorporated as states, others were simply taken and destroyed, some were of native nations, others of colonizers, and some were serious attempts at establishing sovereign nations, while others just lasted for a couple of months as a consequence of some historic event. So let's first list out which these temporary countries were. They were the Vermont Republic, Deseret, the state of Muscogee, the republics of East Florida, West Florida and the Floridas, the Iroquois Confederacy, the Cherokee Nation, the Republic of the Indian Stream, the Republic of Texas, the California Republic, the Great Republic of the Rough and Ready, and the Kingdom of Hawaii. First, the Vermont Republic, which existed between 1777 and 1791. The state was founded when delegates from 28 towns met and declared independence from the jurisdictions and land claims of the British colonies of Quebec, New Hampshire, in New York due to the dissatisfaction regarding the way they were ruled by the British. It was never recognized by any other nation, but they even had their own currency, the Vermont Copper, known as the Vermont Republic, but initially as the Republic of New Connecticut or the Republic of the Green Mountains. The US didn't recognize their independence either because of some territorial disputes they had with New York. Then they tried to join Quebec, which the British accepted and were willing to reward generously. But as the British began to lose the fight against the US in the American Revolutionary War, War, they ended the negotiations with the British and instead began them with the Americans to be able to join the Union. And in fact, their proximity with the American Revolution was big. Their flag is said to have been used by the Green Mountain Boys, a militia force from Vermont that supported the New Hampshire claims and fought against the British. In 1791, it was admitted into the United States as the state of Vermont with the constitution and laws of the independent state continuing in effect after admission. Next, Deseret, which could briefly call itself a country from 1849 to 1850, but the purpose of its creators wasn't to be a country, but rather a state recognized by the US. When Mormon pioneers settled in the area in 1847, it was a part of Mexico. Initially, the local church leader intended to apply for status as a territory or a state. The proposal encompassed nearly all of present-day Utah and Nevada, large portions of California and Arizona, and parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, Idaho, and Oregon, although the actual area of control of Deseret did not include all of these regions. While attempting to be recognized as a state, Deseret was in fact somewhat of an autonomous state slash country, and the US didn't really agree to the creation of the state as the Mormons intended. They thought it was too big, too ambitious, and weren't too eager to hand the rule of a full state to a religious institution. Thoughts of uniting it with California as a single state were considered, but as a compromise, the Utah Territory was created. This map we can see it in blue, compared to the dotted outline which shows the territory the Mormons wanted to establish as their Deseret State. In addition, the idea of creating a state based on Mormonism began to fade away after the coming of the railroad, which opened the territory to many non-Mormon settlers. The flag they used is said to have been this one, similar to that of the United States, but in blue, I assume the bigger central star would be in representation of their desired statehood. The name derives from the word for honeybee in the Book of Mormon, and in the current Utah state flag, we can still see a beehive in representation of this historic temporary state. Before we keep going with the video, a quick message from sponsor and friend of the channel, Blinkist. Blinkist is one of the best apps that exists, honestly, and you can use it to quickly read or listen to books. They know that one of the biggest issues people face when wanting to read or learn about a topic is time, and so they fix that issue for you. Blinkist takes thousands of nonfiction books, extracts their key points, and condenses them into short 15-minute listening or reading sessions. I'm a user of the app, and I even get video ideas from some of the books. Right now, now I've been listening to this book called The Romanovs, which talks about the rise and dramatic fall of one of the world's greatest dynasties, the royal family of the Russian Empire. If you want to read more and learn more, but don't have much time to do it, Blinkist is a great option for you. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash general knowledge will get a free one week trial of the app and also a 25% discount if you choose to keep your membership after that. Now back to the video. 
Muscoji had a little bit of a longer lifespan during four years, 1799 to 1803. The state of Muscoji was a proclaimed sovereign nation located in Florida, founded in 1799 and led by William Augustus Bowles, a loyalist veteran of the American Revolutionary War who fought along the British and then lived among the Muscoji and envisioned uniting the American natives of the Southeast into a single nation that could resist the expansion of the United States and remaining a close ally to the British he envisioned his state as eventually growing to encompass other tribes like the Cherokee, the Upper and Lower Creeks, the Choctaw and the Chickasaw in parts of present-day Georgia and Alabama. Initially, he had the support of the British who wanted to cause as many inconveniences to the Americans as possible, but this support quickly faded away and the state had to face the opposition of both the US and Spain. Eventually, the founder was captured by Spain and their military forces defeated by the US and so the idea of creating a new nation in this area was also destroyed. East Florida, West Florida, and the Republic of the Floridas were located in roughly the same areas, but in different years as we will see. West Florida was a short-lived republic in the western region of Spanish West Florida for just over two and a half months during 1810. It was a territory ruled by many countries, starting with the French, the Spanish, the British, and then the Spanish again, changing hands a bunch of times, and essentially the issue was that the Americans argued the territory was included in the Louisiana Purchase, while the Spanish said that it wasn't, as they had recovered it from the French before that. There was a big influx of Americans into West Florida in the early years of the 19th century, many of which were land speculators, eager to profit should the territory join the US. And so, a revolt took place, which overthrew Spanish control, although the real estate was only one of the reasons among dissatisfaction towards Spanish rule. But even then, support was far from unanimous, and there were competing pro-Spanish, pro-American, and pro-independence factions. The United States didn't recognize the independence of West Florida, and President James Madison proclaimed that the United States should take possession of it on the basis that it was, in fact, part of the Louisiana Purchase, and that is what ended up happening, ending the prospects of an independent nation. Then, East Florida, which existed in 1812. The Republic of East Florida was a republic declared by insurgents against the Spanish rule of, precisely, East Florida, most of whom were apparently from Georgia. In fact, it seems they wanted neither independence nor statehood, and simply full-on annexation by the US, perhaps as a part of the state of Georgia itself. Initially, they were under a mission commissioned by President James Madison, who wanted them to acquire East Florida, but he wished to do so diplomatically. However, many of those who undertook the mission refused and moved on with the rebellion, which went against the desires of the American president. Their flag was white with a blue soldier on it, charging with a bayonet. Beneath him was the Latin motto, Salus Populi Lex Suprema, the safety of the people, the supreme law. But while the US wanted Florida, it didn't want it like like this. And so, these Georgian insurgents were defeated by the US military itself, who returned the territory to the Spanish. However, they did eventually get Florida, which became a part of the Union in 1845. The Republic of the Floridas was another short-lived country in the area from June to December 1817, to establish an independent Florida, at the time still a Spanish territory. The use of plural was to refer to the inclusion of both East and West Florida, which we just saw were separated at the time. It was led by Gregor McGregor, a Scottish military adventurer who some say was commissioned by Simon Bolivar who led revolts of the Spanish colonies in America to capture Florida from Spain. But the only area they ever conquered was Amelia Island raising the Green Cross flag over the Spanish Fort San Carlos. But while they rebelled from the Spanish it was the US who defeated them fearing they would be a danger. And so President Monroe ordered the US Navy to put an end to it. Then the Iroquois Confederacy. The Iroquois Confederacy is believed to have been founded by the Great Peacemaker at an unknown date estimated between 1450 and 1660, bringing together five distinct nations in the Southern Great Lakes area. There wasn't a main national identity as each territory had, for instance, its own language, but they shared a common native identity, I guess. Essentially a confederation of five tribes which joined each other into somewhat of a country. From from east to west, the league was composed of the Mohawk, the Oneida, the Onondaga, the Cayuga, and the Seneca Nations. In 1722, the Tuscarora also joined, and the Confederacy became known as the Six Nations. French, Dutch, and English colonists recognized a need to gain favor with the Iroquois people, who occupied a significant portion of land west of the colonial settlements. They were important, powerful, and so recognized as such. The Iroquois remained a large politically united Native American country until the American Revolution. At this time, 
they became divided. Two of the nations, the Oneida and the Tuscarora, chose to side with the Americans, while the other nations, including the Mohawk, fought with the British. After the US won, the British ceded Iroquois territory without consulting them, and many Iroquois had to abandon their lands and relocate to Canada, and the country was therefore effectively destroyed, with its land becoming a part of the newly independent United States. Another native country was the Cherokee Nation from 1794 to 1907. It was a legal, recognized, autonomous tribal government in North America. I couldn't find much information about how or why this specific state was established by the Cherokee natives, but during the late 20th century, the Cherokee people reorganized, instituting a government with sovereign jurisdiction. It was disbanded after its land rights had been extinguished prior to the admission of Oklahoma as a state, and so we understand that it was located around this area as we can see on the map. In the late 19th century, Congress passed the Dawes Act, intended to promote assimilation and extinguish Indian governments and land claims in preparation for the admission of Oklahoma as a state in 1907. Moving on to a cool one that I didn't know existed, the Republic of Indian Stream, which existed from 1832 to 1835. It was an unrecognized republic in North America along the section of the border that divides the current Canadian province of Quebec from the US state of New Hampshire. We can see it here on this map in green. Its establishment as an independent nation was essentially the result of the ambiguous boundary between the United States and British Lower Canada as defined in the 1783 Treaty of Paris. The treaty didn't specify what the boundary was, and so the area was not definitely under the jurisdiction of either the United States or Canada. And so the people who lived there became saturated and tired of the uncertainty, and at one point decided to rule themselves until the issue was resolved. Their declaration of independence read the people inhabiting the territory mutually agree to form themselves into a free, sovereign, and independent state until such time as we can ascertain to what government we properly belong. Eventually, it was annexed by New Hampshire, and as far as I know, there was no flag, as there was really no national identity to represent, and independence was just a temporary need by the locals. Moving on to two republics that most people already know about and are aware were independent, Texas and California, which both broke away from Mexican rule. Beginning with Texas, Texas was independent from 1836 to 1846, 10 years, much longer than most on this list, save the native ones. Just before its independence, Texas was still a part of Mexico, however, the people that lived there were mostly American settlers, outnumbering the Mexicans by many. Tensions began to rise as talk of secession was heard, and the Mexican state began being more and more military present, which led to an escalation of the situation. Hostilities broke out in 1835 with the Battle of Gonzales, and in 1836, independence was declared and conquered, despite the Mexicans never recognizing it. Internal politics of the Republic were divided between two factions, the nationalists, which advocated the continued independence of Texas, the expulsion of native Americans and the expansion of Texas to the Pacific Ocean, even claiming California, and their opponents who advocated the annexation of Texas to the United States and peaceful coexistence with the Native Americans when possible, these being able to implement their plans, and in 1845 it was annexed by the US. The first flag of the Republic was the Burnett flag, a single gold star on an azure field, followed by the official adoption of the Lone Star flag in 1839. And then California. The California Republic, also known as the Bear Flag Republic, was an unrecognized breakaway state from Mexico that for 25 days in 1846 militarily controlled a part of what is today California. In June of 1846, 33 American immigrants in Alta California rebelled against the Mexican government. Mexican officials had been concerned about a coming war with the US and the growing influx of Americas into California, and it seems that the rebellion was secretly supported by the US to prepare a full-on invasion. This makes it seem that there was never a real intention of becoming becoming independent, just autonomous, and as a part of the US. Another thing that points to that idea is that the rebels only elected military officers, but no official civil structure was ever established. And even this military structure was then incorporated into the US Army just before the territory was incorporated into the United States. Their flag featured a silhouette of a California grizzly bear, which became known as the bear flag, and was later the basis for the official state flag of California, which still has on it the text saying California. California Republic. The one with one of the weirdest names I've seen was the Great Republic of the Rough and Ready, which existed in the year of 1850, essentially a single town in California that seek to be independent. Their name comes from a mining company originating from Wisconsin but present in California due to the gold rush. The company was known as the Rough and Ready Company, named after General Zachary Taylor, whose nickname was precisely Old Rough and Ready, and he had recently been elected the 12th President of the United States. The leader of the 
company had served under Taylor in a war in 1832 and therefore named it after him. The town declared its secession from the Union as the Great Republic of Rough and Ready on the 7th of April of 1850, largely to avoid mining taxes, but it voted to rejoin the Union less than three months later. Their flag wasn't too original, just a dark blue field with its name written on it. And finally, the Kingdom of Hawaii. The Hawaiian Kingdom was a sovereign state located in the Hawaiian archipelago. It was formed in 1795 when the warrior chief Kamehameha, the Great of the Independent Island of Hawaii, conquered the surrounding independent islands. The kingdom won recognition from the major European powers and even used the British and American flags as inspiration for their national flag, which is today the state flag of Hawaii. Eventually, the kingdom was overthrown in 1893, largely at the hands of the Committee of Safety, a group which included resident foreign nationals of American, British, and German descent. Hawaii was briefly an independent republic until the US annexed it in 1898, and about 100 years later, in 1993, the US apologized to the Hawaiian people and acknowledged that the overthrow of the kingdom had been done with the active participation of American agents, admitting the Hawaiian people never directly relinquished their sovereignty to them through any vote. But the independence of the islands is far gone now, and as far as I know, there's no movement to get it back, as seems to be the case for all those on this list. So. Those were the countries, or at least some of the countries, that used to exist inside the United States, or rather, where the United States now exists. Are there any other countries that existed in this territory, then being destroyed and therefore no longer existing? Let me know in the comments, along with any corrections of mistakes you may have noticed, additional information you might have, or just your general opinion. Thank you for 600,000 subscribers, remember to subscribe as well if you want to and haven't yet, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.